Right, today I've come to... Oh, that's better. It's been a long pandemic, hasn't it? Today I've come to uh, Soho, Broadwick Street in London, uh, to see the Broad Street Pump, the famous site of the cholera epidemic that killed over 500 people and, traffic notwithstanding, proved that cholera was a waterborne disease. Traffic, 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 traffic. And this is not the Broad Street Pump. This is a replica on the site of the Broad Street Pump that was erected by a historical society to mark the location of the original pump, which was torn down long ago. Thanks to this man, Jon Snow. No, not that one. No, not that one either. The Jon Snow, who was the Victorian doctor, we discovered that uh, cholera is a waterborne disease and was spreading from this pump. The idea that cholera could be a waterborne disease was new and scary. At the time, diseases were thought to be spread by bad airs, known as miasmas. Um, and uh, the theory wouldn't actually take hold until Louis Pasteur's germ theory demonstrated that germs lived in water and could spread disease through them. With incredible patience and dedication, Jon Snow tracked every single case of cholera and where they got their water from, and found that this pump was the source of almost all cases. Even those that seemed to be miles and miles away from the pump, they were getting water specially taken to them, to, uh, as they felt that this water tasted particularly nice. But despite the scepticism, uh, the pump did have its handle removed and the people stopped getting cholera, which uh, was great for everyone. And it led to a revolution in London of public societies dedicated to providing clean drinking water. And we're going to go now and see somewhere else, which was the first public drinking fountain in London. Right, I've come to St Sepulchre without Newgate, uh, which is right next to the very busy A40, which is behind me, which wings its way from London up towards Oxford. Because I've come to see this, London's first public drinking fountain. So this unassuming little object is London's first public drinking fountain. Uh, famously asking you to replace the cup. This cup right here. This was created by the Metropolitan Drinking Fountain Association, which has went through a few name changes over the years, um, but broadly speaking, Metropolitan Drinking Fountain Association, that was dedicated to providing, free of charge, clean drinking water for the people of London. It was founded in 1859 when the scientific understanding was not necessarily that uh, water itself contained the disease, although many were beginning to subscribe to that theory, but it was felt that clean drinking water piped in from uh, nice clean reservoirs provided a, uh, a wholesome kind of water without the miasmas that cause disease, regardless of the fact that that is wrong and disease travels through water itself. This drinking fountain was established here uh, and uh, in, in 1867, and at one point used to get 7,000 customers a day. But of course, although I use the word customers, this was a charitable enterprise dedicated to providing clean drinking water for free for the people of London. You probably haven't heard of St Sepulchre without Newgate uh, by that name, but I'm willing to bet that you have heard of St Sepulchre without uh, Newgate, because this is the Bells of Old Bailey. Oranges and lemons, say the bells of St. Clemens. This is the bell of Old Bailey, because Old Bailey is over there. There it is, the Old Bailey. So this was the bell that used to ring uh, when the courts were in session. It was the bell that used to ring when men went for hanging as well. Cheerful stuff. Like many churches in London, the Sepulchre Church has been destroyed by fire, the Great Fire of London and the Blitz, of course. And uh, it's, as such, an interesting mix of styles. This is uh, very um, Tudor Gothic. Then the, 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 the major outside area was all built in the very late uh, to, uh, medieval period, mid-Tudor period. Um, but it was then redecorated in the 18th century um, because the Great Fire of London gutted its interior, leaving only the walls. That's a... Quite remarkable little place. Quite a refuge off the A40. Like many English churches, it contains 
the tattered battle standards of the local regiment, and I believe that these are the Royal Fusiliers.